on the 29th of August, 1984, a young black woman walks into Guy's hospital. She is carrying a small baby girl, which she dumps into the arms of a nurse and then disappears. The nurse is immediately alarmed at the condition of the baby as she is covered in very heavy bruising and bite marks and a massive head injury, a fractured skull. The baby is immediately rushed into intensive care and put onto life support. The hospital have no idea who the baby is, where her parents are, or even who they are, or what has happened to the little baby girl. This case would eventually lead to the government stepping in to issue guidelines for the whole of the social services profession on visiting and watching over children at risk. This is the tragic story of 21-month-old baby Tyra Henry. Tyra Henry, born on the 8th of November, 1982, to parents Claudette Henry, aged 17, and Andrew Neal, then 18. Immediately after Tyra was born, she was made the subject of an interim order by Lambeth Social Services. And in 1983, a few months after her birth, Tyra was given a full care order, as well as a place of safety order at Lambeth Juvenile Court and placed into the care of her maternal grandmother, Beatrice Henry. Tyra's mother, Claudette Henry, was allowed to see her daughter Tyra under the condition that she did not take Tyra around the baby's father, Andrew Neal, and Claudette was seen occasionally taking her daughter out. But sometime during August 1984, Tyra's grandmother Beatrice claims that her electricity was cut off. Grandmother Beatrice said she did not want to use candles as they were dangerous, as she had lost a child before in a house fire. So when Tyra's mother, Claudette, suggested that she take the baby, Tyra, to stay with her until the grandmother's electric was back on, Beatrice agreed to it, saying that she thought it was a good idea. The problem with this was that Tyra's mother stayed with Andrew Neal, Tyra's father, who the court had ordered that she was not to be in the care of. The grandmother, Beatrice, informed the social services that her electricity had been cut off but they said that they could not help her with that despite Tyra still being under their care and on the at-risk register. So because she had no electricity, the grandmother allowed Tyra to go to stay with her parents. Tyra was taken by her mother Claudette to stay with her and the baby's father at flat 22 Evelyn House on Bonham Road in Brixton, London. Within a month, Tyra would be dead. On Wednesday the 29th of August 1984, a young black woman walks into Guy's hospital holding an injured baby and goes to the casualty unit. The baby was placed into the arms of a nurse and the young woman then fled, saying that somebody had just handed her the baby outside and she brought the baby in. The baby had a very serious skull fracture and was covered in bite marks and bruising to the face. The baby had bites all over, including on the buttocks and thighs, as well as bruising over her eyes, abdomen, legs and back. The baby was immediately taken to the intensive care unit seriously unwell and attempts were made to identify who the baby was. A note was found in the baby's pocket with the name Julie Miller on it. Also written on the note was a message which read, I am scared and running away from my boyfriend. He has beaten us both up. And despite an extensive search by the police for the identity of the child and her parents, they came up with nothing. News bulletins went out asking for the public's help in identifying the child. But again, nothing came of it. A police spokesman stated that they were anxious for the mother to contact them, saying, This baby is seriously injured and hurt 
and the woman's own safety is of serious consideration. This was certainly the act of a desperate woman. The next day, on the 30th of August 1984, the then 19-year-old mother, Claudette Henry, turned up at the hospital looking for a baby where she was taken in by police and questioned at Southwark Police Station. The baby that had been dumped at the hospital was now revealed to be 21-month-old Tyra Henry. Claudette Henry, the mother, was released the next day and housed at a secret address and police put out a statement saying that they were looking for Claudette's boyfriend, the child's father, Andrew Neal, for questioning. The following day, on Saturday the 1st of September 1984, despite doing all they could to battle to save her life, three days after being admitted, 21-month-old baby Tyra was pronounced dead at 12.45 a.m. Pathologist Ian West carried out the post-mortem on 21-month-old baby Tyra, where it was discovered that the baby had 57 bite marks all over her body. The bites were so bad that the muscle tissue on her buttocks had gone hard. The pathologist also noticed that there were tears on the skin of Tyra's mouth, suggesting that hands were forced into Tyra's mouth and she was dragged up from the floor by her mouth. Bite marks on her body indicated that she had been lifted up by Andrew Neal's jaws and she had been scratched up. Two heavy impacts were made to the back of the baby's head, one of them resulting in a fractured skull and blood clots were on her brain. The pathologist saying that the massive brain injuries were consistent with the baby being thrown against a wall. Police began a murder inquiry and began looking for baby Tyra's father, 20-year-old Andrew Neal, who had gone on the run. But within hours of the baby's death, Andrew Neal gave himself up by walking into Brixton Police Station with his solicitor. A few days after walking into Brixton Police Station, Tyra's father, Andrew Neal, appealed at Camberwell Green Magistrates Court, handcuffed to a police officer where he was charged with the murder of his daughter. The courts remanded him in custody to appear at Lambeth Magistrates at a later date. When the media caught wind of baby Tyra's murder and the fact that her own father had beaten her 57 times, he was labelled by the media as the cannibal kid. The four-day trial began on Monday the 22nd of July, 1985, ten months after Tyra's father had handed himself in, where a jury of six men and six women were told that Tyra had lived with her grandmother Beatrice and called her mummy. Beatrice told the court that Tyra was like her own child. Baby Tyra had been taken to her father's home by her mother, a three-bedroomed council house where baby Tyra's father, Andrew, lived in one room with Claudette, Tyra's mother. The second bedroom was occupied by Andrew Neal's father and his wife, whilst the third room was occupied by Andrew's sister, Denise, and her boyfriend. Andrew would become violent towards Claudette, hitting her with his fists and with a pole. He also called baby Tyra a cunt and other obscenities and he swore at her whenever he was annoyed with her. He also would hit baby Tyra hard on her bottom or back of legs whenever he felt like she was misbehaving. On the 24th of August 1984, Andrew Neal and Claudette Henry claimed that they had gotten into a fight about another girl. Claudette picked up baby Tyra, threatening to take her back to her grandmother Beatrice's house where she was court ordered to be and Andrew flew into a rage and began hitting her. On the stand, Claudette Henry spoke in a barely audible voice and told the jury that Andrew was a kind and caring father, saying that he petted Tyra 
whenever she cried and that he also played doggy with her, crawling on all fours across the floor with baby Tyra on his back. Claudette Henry claimed that on the day they got into a fight, Andrew had started punching her hard and that as she was holding 21-month-old baby Tyra in her arms at the time, Tyra was punched also. Although Andrew Neal did not take the stand, through his defence lawyer, he placed the blame on Claudette, claiming that Claudette had used the baby as a shield. Claudette then claimed on the stand that she tried to then hand baby Tyra over to her violent father and Tyra accidentally fell out of her arms and hit her head on the floor. The mother, Claudette, claimed that when baby Tyra fell to the floor, she started twitching and realising what had just happened, both she and Andrew started crying. Claudette then said that Andrew reached for the twitching and injured child and Claudette at first thought that he was going to shake the baby, but instead he put the baby on his lap took her to the bathroom to get something to wipe blood off her mouth and then put her to bed as she was unconscious. Claudette then told the jury that she told Andrew to bite the baby to try to revive her as the pain might make her react. So Andrew then proceeded to bite his baby daughter 57 times all over her body. Andrew's defence, Mr Ash Lincoln QC, argued his actions of biting his unconscious child by saying to the jury, we are dealing with people who have a different approach, manners and customs to ourselves. Continuing on, Claudette Henry said that she then bathed the child, baby Tyra, and put her to bed, claiming that she didn't see any marks on the baby's body. She also claimed that Tyra did not open her eyes again after being accidentally dropped on her head. When asked by the prosecution how many times Andrew had hit her that day during the fight, Claudette responded and said, I do not want to say anything about him. I have dropped the charges. Claudette continued to protect Andrew whilst in the witness box, despite the fact that he'd murdered their child. Andrew's sister Paula came round to the house to visit and when she saw the state that baby Tyra was in, her eyes closed and she was covered in bruises. She picked the child up and rushed the baby to the hospital. It was Andrew's sister Paula that had dumped baby Tyra in the nurse's arms and then fled, claiming that she didn't know who the baby was and that somebody had just thrust the baby into her arms. Andrew had accompanied his sister and daughter to the hospital but probably afraid of the consequences of being seen, he stayed outside the hospital whilst his sister carried the baby inside. That night it was claimed that Andrew was suicidal and crying and minutes after Tyra was taken to hospital, Andrew's best friend, 17-year-old Patrick Osborne said that Andrew had turned up at his house, eyes bulging and looking frightened. Patrick Osborne told reporters, Tyra should never have been allowed to stay so near to her father. He could be violent and had a short temper. He often attacked Tyra's mum, Claudette. Everybody around here knows that Tyra should have been moved a long, long way from Andrew. What Patrick Osborne had meant by this was that when baby Tyra had been placed in the care of her grandmother Beatrice by social services, it was only a few doors down on the same street that her father Andrew had lived. They lived just 30 yards away from the grandmother's house at number 7. Some reports say that they lived in the same block. Despite the court's ordering that he was not to have any contact with the child or to be in his care. Patrick Osborne went on to say, Andrew has many friends, so we wouldn't find it hard to keep moving. Whenever he's been involved in violence before, he's always been full of remorse. Whilst baby Tyra lay in hospital, fighting for her life that night, Andrew Neal had gone out partying and drinking to celebrate his 20th birthday, despite his earlier cries of suicide. 
It was also revealed that in January 1983, when baby Tyra was just two months old and 19 months before her death, injuries were found on the then two-month-old baby, but social services did not follow this up. Neighbours said that 10 days before Tyra's death, whilst in the care of her parents, Tyra had a nasty bruise on her face. Health visitor Marie England had last visited baby Tyra three months before her murder at her grandmother's home on the 10th of May 1984, where she said that Tyra always appeared happy and well cared for. On Friday the 24th of August 1984, five days before baby Tyra was taken to hospital, baby Tyra had wet the bed and in anger, Andrew had picked her up and hit her and had bit baby Tyra hard around her left nipple. He then swore at the baby and dropped her on the floor when she screamed. When Claudette tried to intervene, Andrew turned on her and rained multiple punches on her. He then beat her with a piece of wood and then dragged Claudette out of the flat and back to her mother's house. By that evening, the pair had reconciled. Social service workers held a conference every six months to check on the well-being of Tyra and they say that she appeared to be well cared for by her grandmother. It was stressed at these conferences to Tyra's mother and grandmother that under no circumstances should Tyra's father Andrew have any care of the child. There was a dark reason as to why social services were adamant that Andrew Neal should not under any circumstances have care of his baby daughter. The safety order had been placed on Tyra because of what had happened to her brother. On November the 17th, 1981, when Andrew was 17 and Claudette was age 16, they had a baby boy that they named Tyrone. Two incidents happened that did not arouse suspicion. The first one was that they brought the baby to the hospital claiming that he had fell off the bed. The second incident was when they claimed that whilst Andrew was bathing his baby son Tyrone, the bath stand had collapsed. Within days of these incidents, when baby Tyrone was just four months old, Andrew had severely battered the baby, causing him to be injured so severely that he went blind and was left with brain damage. After it was said, that four-month-old Tyrone had been violently shaken. Andrew Neal was said to have picked up his four-month-old baby son by the feet and swung him round, his head hitting a wall, cracking open his skull. The baby was also said to have fractured thighs. Some reports say that four-month-old baby Tyrone was also left crippled, deaf and mute because of the injuries he sustained. The baby boy was immediately removed from his parents and placed into foster care. Andrew Neal was arrested and charged with grievous bodily harm and convicted for the assault on his four-month-old baby son Tyrone. And because of his age at the time of sentence, aged 18 years old, Andrew was sent to Borstal. Borstals were prisons for young offenders under the age of 21 which focused on education rather than punishment in order to avoid inmates reoffending. The Criminal Justice Act of 1982 abolished the Borsal system and replaced them with the youth custody centres. Andrew appealed his sentence and was acquitted as the court heard that the then teenage Andrew had had several of his teenage friends around at his house that day and it was said that several of the teenagers had bounced the four-month-old baby boy up and down as they were excited to see him as he'd just come out of hospital for a feeding issue. Because of this, Andrew's conviction was quashed due to lack of evidence and he was released. But describing the night that four-month-old baby Tyrone was injured and blinded, Patrick Osborne, who was Andrew's best friend, said, Andrew told me the baby wouldn't stop crying, so he shook him, and the next thing he knows, baby had gone all quiet. But these were not isolated incidents, because seven years earlier, in 1977, 
when Andrew Neal was just 13 years old, he attacked his father's girlfriend's two-year-old son, booting the two-year-old in the face and lashing the child with a shoe or a belt, causing considerable bruising to the child's face. The mother of the two-year-old child refused to press charges against the then 13-year-old Andrew, so Andrew was released. Andrew Edward Neal was said to have suffered from fits of uncontrolled anger and had a criminal record for acts of violence, theft and drug offences. But while some remand for the murder of his daughter, the 20-year-old unemployed electrician from Brixton was beaten up. Andrew's father said that he still loved his son and feared for his son's safety in prison. Back in court, it was said, that the bite marks on Tyra's body had been done with considerable force. Professor of Paediatrics at Guy's Hospital, Roger Robinson, said that he'd never seen such severe brain injuries associated with ordinary falls in the home. As the circumstances of what Tyra's mother Claudette had explained on the stand had happened to baby Tyra was described to the professor, he replied, in no way could that produce the injuries in the child. That is not how brain damage happens. On Thursday the 25th of July 1985, the jury deliberated for nearly five hours before finding 20-year-old Andrew Neal guilty of the murder of his 21-month-old daughter, Tyra Henry. The judge, Robert Limbury, described it as an appalling case of brutality and he cleared social services of blame saying I can find no fault whatsoever of the social services in the circumstances of the case as I have heard them. The judge made no recommendations on the length of time that Andrew Neal had to serve saying no doubt the Secretary of State will be aware of all the circumstances. The killer dad Andrew Neal who had been held in Brixton Prison on remand, was placed into youth custody where he would remain until the age of 21, after which he'd been moved to an adult prison. At the age of 21, Andrew Neal was moved to Wormwood Scrubs, an adult prison, and placed on a special landing for his own protection, as prisoners were baying for his blood and wanted to do him harm for what he did to baby Tyra. He was placed on a wing with four other child killers, all on a special wing for their own safety. This wing was called Rule 43 Landing and it had been designed to protect child killers, sex offenders and supergrasses whose life were in danger from other prisoners. The child killers received hate mail and a prisoner that had been in the same prison as Andrew Neal and released said the child killers are marked men for the rest of their lives. Somebody will get to them. It may take months, it may take years, but they will never be forgotten. A Home Office official said, it's very unusual to have four child killers on one landing, but it is a sign of the times. It is a dreadful reflection on society. An internal inquiry was done within the social services and it was discovered that staff handling Tyra Henry's case had never ever read the files which told of her father's wicked history of child abuse which, if read properly, would have provided additional information for staff assessing the risks. Social workers had not properly studied or even read the dossier containing Andrew Neal's crimes and social workers determined that it was unlikely that Tyra would come to any injury despite what had happened to her older brother, baby Tyrone, before she was born. Three months before Tyra was murdered by her father, plans had been drawn up by social services to remove Tyra off the at-risk register as they considered that the period of most danger was over for Tyra and the case was now low risk all this without allegedly reading the files properly. The caseworker's methods were slammed as unacceptable, incomprehensible and extraordinarily 
naive. It was said that social services failed to police the family because white social workers were scared of challenging a black family, possibly because of not wanting to be seen as racist. And social worker Anne Daniels, the team leader, and Charles Doherty, the area coordinator, were facing disciplinary action and were told that they could be sacked for professional shortcomings. On Friday the 26th of July 1985, the day after Andrew Neal was jailed for the murder of his daughter, 600 social workers and Lambeth Town Hall staff went on strike protesting the disciplinary action taken over the Tyra Henry case and the fact that three social workers were facing the sack. NALGO, now go, which stands for National and Local Government Officers Association, which was a British trade union representing local government white collar workers and was formed in 1905 and merged with two other unions in 1993 to form what we know today as Unison, said that Lambeth Council had rushed through an inadequate inquiry in a bid to find a scapegoat for the tragedy. Health Minister John Patton announced plans to introduce new guidelines for social services in the wake of Tyra Henry's murder. The Health Minister told MPs that new rules for the whole of the social work profession would be in place by that Christmas, which would be a six-point strategy aimed at protecting children and reducing abuse. He said, We hope the new guidelines will do much to minimise these tragic cases which have appalled the nation. The Health Minister also said that it was essential that social workers adhere to government guidelines on visiting and watching over children at risk. There is no excuse whatsoever for any individual social worker, whatever difficulties he or she is working under, to not visit a child who is deemed at risk. Andrew Neal was eventually moved to Grendon Underwood Psychiatric Hospital Prison. Nearly 40 years after Tyra's murder, there is no information available on whether her father, Andrew Neal, is still in prison. And there are some reports that say that her mother, Claudette Henry, died in the year 2002.